Let us try to use error bounds for the trapezoid of midpoint rule to help us predict how many subdivisions do we need to be guaranteed a certain level of precision. So specifically, how large should we take how large should we take n in order to guarantee that the trapezoid rule and the midpoint rule can approximate the integral 1 to 2, 1 over x dx, accurate to point zero 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 one. As we want to be accurate to four decimal places, how can we guarantee uh, that level of precision? Uh, well, it, it comes down to the error bounds that we had seen before. We know that the error associated to the trapezoid rule is going to be bounded above by k b minus a cubed over 12 n squared right here. For which case we know b minus a, it's just going to be 1 and 2. So these are the bounds of the integral. So you're going to get k times 2 minus 1 cubed. This sits above 12 n squared. We don't know what n is. That's what we're trying to figure out. Um, let's think about this k for a second. Remember the bounds here, this, this k here is supposed to be a bound on the second derivative. Uh, the second derivative on the interval here, 1 to 2. For which case, the second derivative of our function, it's going to be 2 over x cubed. And as this is a decreasing function, its graph would look something like this from 1 to 2. The biggest value is going to occur here on the left endpoint because it's decreasing. So you get 1 comma 2. We can take k to be this number 2. Using this above, we now look at 2. So notice 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 cubed is 1. So the numerator is going to be 2. We have a 12 inch squared. This is our error bound for the trapezoidal rule. And what we want this to do is we want this to be less than or equal to 0 0.0001. Uh, or if you prefer, you can think of it as a fraction, 1 over 10,000. Like so. And so this is the, this, we want to solve this inequality for n right here. So what we can do is we can take reciprocals. So just flip this thing upside down. We're going to get 12n squared over 2. It's going to be greater than or equal to 1 over 10,000. Oh, I didn't flip the fraction, sorry. 10,000 itself. Now, notice that as I took the reciprocal, the order of the inequality gets swapped around. Um, notice, for example, that 2 is less than 3, but on the other hand, 1 half is greater than uh, 1 third. When you take reciprocals, it's flip, it flips the direction of these things. So make sure that you reflect that right here. Uh, 2 does go into 12 exactly 6 times, in which case we get 6n squared is greater than or equal to 10,000. Divide both sides by 6. We get that n squared should be greater than or equal to 10,000 over 6. And there is a factor of 2 that's common to 10,006. I'm not going to bother with that right now. Because uh, we're going to need a calculator to help us out here. Because the next step is to take the pods of square root. N needs to be greater than or equal to the square root of 10,000 over 6. And so using a calculator to help us out with that, uh, we're going to end up, this number is going to be approximately 40.8. Now notice that N itself has to be a whole number. It has to be an integer. Because this is the number of, the number of subdivisions we have to do. So 40... 40.8 doesn't quite work. We need to choose n to be the next integer greater than 40.8, which is going to be 41. So to guarantee that our to guarantee that we're accurate to four decimal places using the trapezoidal rule, uh, we need to use at least 41 subdivisions. Now, if we were to change this to the midpoint rule, as we were assigned to do, it doesn't really change the calculation that much. The only difference is the error bound. We don't use 12. We actually have a 24. And if we carry that throughout, 24 there, you'll use the same bounds, 2 to 1. You'll use the same k value, which is 2. Again, it's just this constant coefficient on the bottom is 24. Um, and then so proceeding to solve this, 2 goes into 24 12 times. So you get a 12 right here. Uh, bring this back down. You end up with a 12. You end up here with a 12. And if you take the square root of 10,000 divided by 12, you don't get 40.8 that time. You're going to end up with, uh, well, you know, rounding this thing, you'll get approximately 29. Again, I, I took the liberty of rounding this up uh, to the next integer because we're looking at uh, 50 over the square root of 3. Um, and so I want you to compare these two right here. The number, in order to gain four levels, four, four decimal places of accuracy with this estimate, um, it, 
takes 41 calculations to do it for the trapezoid rule and only 30 or 29 just about 30 for the midpoint rule and so you know for a human these are both pretty tedious right we don't want to do either one of them for a calculation it's not such a big deal right you're doing about an extra 10 calculations uh, again for a computer it's not such a big deal but the thing is the midpoint rule has on average right here this we anticipate about a 75 percent savings on cost of how much computational effort is necessary to put and so if we're working with very complicated algorithms that have to approximate things really quickly and, and, and there's and there's millions maybe billions of calculations to do these cost savings start to become significant amounts of times we potentially could solve a problem two weeks faster on a supercomputer using one method over the other um, and so this is why these type of error bounds are relevant to us is we want to know how good our answer is and we want to compare the different strategies and on on average we will anticipate that the midpoint rule is going to be much much faster and you do see in, in this example you see about a 75 percent reduction um I, i'm sorry what what i'm saying here with the 75 figures 29 is approximately uh 75 percent of 41 and therefore the midpoint rule would give us about a 25 percent uh, gain uh on that is we'll, we'll use a lot of 25 percent less amount of time uh, and that's what I was trying to say there. So it's good to try to analyze how good our approximations are, how efficient they are, because sometimes we have to compute with approximations because the integral otherwise is just too difficult to do. Now that brings us to the end of our lecture here, lecture 17. Uh, we're going to proceed to talk about some different approximation techniques in the next one, uh, number 18. We're very similar to this, but we'll introduce something called Simpson's rule, which apparently will make uh, you know, it'll make the midpoint and trapezoid rules obsolete in comparison. So stay tuned.